Merry Christmas. Today, my guest is somebody who is a very accomplished singer, songwriter, artist, good friend of mine, very funny guy. And there is an animated series that's being developed right now based on this guy's music. And I get to be the voice of one of the characters. Today, we have Ansi McLean. From the farm that Johnny Cash called the center of the universe, this is the Jack Vale Podcast. I like Willie and I like Waylon. You can kiss my cash. Yeah. It's Christmas at the trailer park and everybody's here. Christmas lights are blinking cause we leave them up all year. You'll trigger pink flamingos that start to sing when you walk in. It's Christmas at the trailer park again. The kids can't wait to see what Santa Claus has up his sleeve. Our Hooters advent calendar counts down to Christmas Eve. Aunt Sarah's out of rehab and Uncle Jeff's out of the pen. It's Christmas at the trailer park again. Fight lot line, ho, 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 and pass that turkey leg. Jingle bells and Batman smells and Robin laid an egg. We'll lounge around in Lazy Boy and help the Titans win. It's Christmas at the trailer park again. We gather around the living room for the family gift exchange. We met back in October and we swapped each other's names. A fight almost broke out over a NASCAR wallet chain. It's Christmas at the trailer park again. Women at the party all steer clear of Uncle Jack. Women at the party all steer clear of Uncle Jack. Cause mistletoe is duct taped to the bill of his John Deere cat. Aunt Judy's hugging Beth and Dawn, though she knows they live in sin. It's Christmas at the trailer park again. Everybody! Fa la la and ho ho ho, past that turkey leg. Jingle bells and Batman smells and Robin laid an egg. There's a Dukes of Hazard marathon revving up on Channel 10. It's Christmas at the trailer park again. The strange array of figures form our annual nativity scene. Plywood cut out camels and a snowman join the team. A cabbage patch baby Jesus, an inflatable wise man. It's Christmas at the trailer park again. Two whole days of cooking just to feed all our kinfolk. Butter flavored Crisco and Velveeta's bought in bulk. Mom's death by mayonnaise casserole is a hit with all us men. It's Christmas at the trailer park again. Fa la la and ho 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 and pass that turkey leg. Jingle bells and Batman smells and Robin laid an egg. We'll lounge around in lazy boys and help the Titans win. Big finish! It's Christmas. At the trailer park again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh. Oh! We are um, going to talk to uh, Ansi McLean today. So thanks for coming. Oh, man, it's great to be here. Ansi's. Um, thank you for inviting me. Oh, man, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm so excited that, and that you wanted to come and do this and and uh, and everything. I, I have so many things that I want to ask you and talk to you about, and I know we had lunch like not in the recent past. Yeah, but it was um, very loud, so yeah. this is a lot quieter. Yeah. You complained about it the whole time, actually. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I remember Can that. I say the place? No? You sure can. Oh, yeah, Hattie B's hot, so, somewhat hot chicken. Never hot enough for me. Yeah, when I suggested it, you could have just been like, I could we go somewhere else? Have. I, know some, I know you wanted to now. I some better chicken places, but you know that's a that's a popular place. Everybody goes there. Yeah. Um, and I was just glad that we weren't standing in line for an hour to get in. But yeah. But yeah. once we got yeah. in there, man, 
it's like there's there's no uh there's no soft surfaces it's all like metal everywhere <laughs> so it just so echoes <laughs> you can hear the guy five tables over talking better than you can at your own table and they had the loud music <laughs> what yeah yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, I'm like, I know. why do people come here? I know, I know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's popular. Yeah, mm -hmm. I enjoyed. Yeah. I enjoyed our time together, though. Oh, I did. From too. what I could hear of it, I did too. As we were, you know, mm -hmm. our time walking from our cars into the place and then leaving the place, going to our cars, that was yeah. very effective. Yeah. That was actually better. We got more accomplished. Yeah. We had a better conversation on that short walk afterwards. <laughs> so, yeah, I I, uh, I always love hanging with you. There's never enough time yeah. uh, to yeah. hang out. And so when yeah. you invited me here, I'm like, I want to cancel the seven doctor's appointments I had. Uh, oh, I appreciate that. It was, was kind of life or death thing, I'm just going to say. But, I mean, we, I scheduled them for next Wednesday, and I, I'm sure it'll be fine. You have to prioritize I do, your yeah. life. But, yeah, so I'm just – I'm going <laughs> to – I'm happy to be here. This might be my last podcast interview ever, <laughs> okay, but I'm great. really, really happy to be Listen, here. Listen, so. I will never forget it. Oh, that's well. Then, that, then it's all worth it. For <laughs> I me. know. So I'll always know. be in your heart. That's right. Oh, you know, before that's he died, right. yeah, <laughs> he you know, came out he to said the farm. He chose this <laughs> over his doctor's life-saving. <laughs> <laughs> no, the only thing I had going today, honestly, was um, I had to dust under the day bed in the guest room that was that's been on my to-do list forever and i have to buy eggs uh i'm out of eggs so like those two th other than this that's all i have to do so when i get back you gotta have eggs i'm, I'm gonna stop at kroger's mm -hmm. and i'll uh oh and i'll dust later i can wait it's Ugh. been a year and a half I, it, it can yeah. last another do you get half. organic eggs i do <laughs> okay free try to get the cage free organic good you stuff. know i don't want to eat you know chickens man Hey, they're fascinating. Yeah. Like, what, don't, what, are we, what are we doing putting them in a cage? Yeah. Let them run free. Free. And they're mating. They're having fun. They get that, yeah. like, you know, that three minutes of exhilaration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're going to lay eggs for us. Yeah. We're going to eat their babies. That's, that's like, don't, that's so, why are we putting the them in The least cages? we can do is let them run around the, free. The least we do. Let them enjoy their life, you know. Yeah, while they're here. They live like seven and a half years. Yeah. And... And they they give us eggs multiple times in each year. Do people uh, do they eventually? Is there's a cutoff point, right, where eventually you 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 have chicken, you eat chicken? Is that seven and a half years, or do you mean they have a seven and a half year lifespan? Well, no, they uh, they don't live you know incredibly long. Okay, so, I've, I've heard oh. people having chickens for twenty years. Sometimes they'll last. You know, it oh. depends on the breed, I think. Uh huh. But. Um, you know, I grew up on a farm, and we had chickens and everything, and they, we ate them all, you know. Okay. I think we ate every chicken I ever met. So you, you, you do, you, you do uh, every, that you ever met? So you, you eat You eggs. meet a chicken. I mean, you do meet. I mean, if you've ever, if you've ever encountered a chicken, it's, it, it's a, you meet the chicken. The chi you, you, it makes eye contact. No, you're right. It knows who you are. Yeah. Uh, its little brain does, like, four functions really well. Okay. And one of those is, like, who's feeding me i want to know who's feeding me and and thank you very much yeah and they're they can actually be very affectionate animals birds i can't believe you know a lot about chickens man i you know i grew up with them and everything and uh you stay away from the roosters the roosters can be mean they're territorial yeah and that's their harem you know the, uh -huh. the uh -huh. little white female chickens running around are all that's they belong to him right and so and that's where the eggs come from so you don't mess with him right right um but they have the talons on the back of their legs, so and they they use them. They fly up and f dive at your feet first. Wow, it's frightening. And yeah. if you've been gouged like by it. one, you you don't mess with them again ever. And so you leave them alone. But they'll leave you alone if you're just there feeding. You're throwing grain out and stuff. You know, just right. seed. But uh, but they will. <laughs> I mean, roosters, man. And the bigger they are, the badder they are. Yeah, it's it's like in the boxing world. It's the same thing. Really? Yeah. And that's uh, why they do those cockfights. Yeah. Yeah. Which is horrible. Yeah. But I, th I think some of them, to be honest, I think some of the roosters enjoy it. Really? I mean, I'm not. Because of know, their. I don't know for real. I'm guessing. I guess uh -huh. I'm guessing. Uh huh. Uh huh. Who could enjoy that, really? Yeah. But, you got to have the right tem temperament for it. Probably. Yeah, and they probably have a little rooster 
this is a really are we really going down this uh rooster topic we can because you know they give roosters uh uh uh, testosterone or like hormone enhancing drugs before they fight do they really they do oh okay i didn't know that and they make them bigger too i'm impressed that you know this they make them bigger too man it's it's like you want the bigger you know you want a big rooster with who's pissed yeah you know who's pissed off naturally at the world Oh yeah, and you throw them in there, and they wrap, they they kind of rouse them up. They they Ooh. get them all excited before they throw them in there, Ooh. because it gets them mad, and they'll, they'll turn around, and start to peck at the hands and everything, and just yeah. let them loose. And yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's have it's you ever good. bet on one? No, never saw one live, but uh, mm. I've seen a few documentaries. Really, I didn't. I'm How really, many are there? I, there's a lot of there's a lot of chicken documentaries out there. Really. Actually. I saw one, uh, Sherry watched one the other day that was about like, you know, cage free, you know, like just the health of chickens and eggs and stuff like that, but not the cockfight one. Yeah. Kind farms. I like to call them. It's like, um, they're just, just a little more conscientious than the farms that we all grew up on. That's pretty cool. It is cool. I mean, you got to figure, they say there's also this philosophy in, uh, the food industry, these these organic farmers and stuff mm-hmm. they say that um actually you can taste when an animal has been mistreated they say that it comes out in the food it comes out in the meat what yeah the, the people that they're diehard believe this stuff and do you believe that well i don't know i think if i'm hungry enough i'll eat a pissed off chicken <laughs> I mean, I mean, I will. I'm, I'm saying, you know, it does. I, I'm saying it matters most of the time. But if I'm really hungry, yeah. And if there's some, you know, if there's some, uh, sort of a, I don't know. If the, if the chicken lived in squalor and pain, uh, they say that the toxins seep into the flesh, and yeah, and that, and that, that stays in there. You know, talk to a massage therapist. They tell you that all the time, right? Working out knots. Yeah, you're right. That's just toxic. I guess that makes sense. That's toxic stuff, and they're working. I just out. never thought about it in terms of like the taste. Like if if I've if never had could actually human flesh uh, that I know of, uh-huh. but I would imagine that there. I bet there's because it's chemical, right? Yeah, I guess it does. Make it makes sense. I would. I would bet it makes sense. I would put twenty bucks down right now. To, Wow. To say that, yeah, there's probably a, a taste factor. Yeah. In in flesh of any kind. They're probably Hitler must have, he would have tasted awful. Right? You know what I mean? Just all of that, like all of that evil, yeah. all of that you're talking about toxicity. I would not want to eat Hitler. Hitler. <laughs> I would not want to so eat stupid. Hitler's calf. You know, like <laughs> however oh, the it was prepared. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. you know, grilled. Yeah. Um roasted. Mm-hmm. Roasted would probably be a little better, probably. Mm-hmm. Mother Teresa. I bet she Mother tastes Teresa's pretty probably, good. Mother Teresa's probably, you know, it's sweet. probably real sweet and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say. Just the the, the least amount of toxins. Mm-hmm. So will you put cannibalism in the hashtag for this show? Probably. Yeah? yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, <laughs> I think you should. Yeah. I think you should. Now, I, you know, we got off on this conversation. You know, there may be people watching, have no idea who we are. <laughs> be like we're okay this is uh who ancy, are these guys and yeah we'll- ancy is a, a a very um accomplished singer songwriter uh i kind of don't know where to begin i've learned a lot about you beyond the musical realm in extremely artistic uh no, there's i would say extremely extremely accomplished, accomplished sorry ex- extremely accomplished maybe even like artist you know beyond mm-hmm. comprehension mm-hmm accomplished Uh, okay can i tell you something yes please okay so i'm gonna try i'm gonna try to say some stuff that i i've maybe you've never heard me say to you before or ask you oh awesome um i think about stuff all the time and i remember even the last time when we had lunch i was like i wish i would have asked him that question (laughs) i do that too all the time with with everybody Yeah. yeah um so you um i i'm kind of i'm very very curious to know Heterosexual, and I don't know why everyone asks me that question. Okay, but I'm just going to beat you to the punch. I'm just okay. going to tell you because right. I get asked that a lot. Okay, but yeah, he- okay. hetero. Okay, all right. Next, the other question. Yeah, the other question <laughs> I was going to ask you was, uh, 
<laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. I broke your train of thought, man. <laughs> I want to know how. Um, well, first of all, let me say this. You, you're a very um, your songs are very relatable to people, uh, a lot of people. And uh, comedy has been a really important part of, of what you sing about. Absolutely. You, you've brought comedy into your, um, your act, into your songwriting. I'll never forget uh, the very first time I heard you or heard about you was maybe 10 years ago, Jake, maybe roughly something like that. We, were, we lived in Redding, California. <clears throat> yep. Um, a buddy of mine at, at Costco, uh, Doug Stein, was like, you have to, you have to come to this concert with thank me. Thank you, Doug. He, <laughs> if you're out there, Doug, thank you, bud. He said, have you ever heard of Ancy <clears throat> McLean? And the, he said the whole thing and the trailer park troubadours. And I went, no. But, but, but he kind of had you at hello with fantastic. the trailer park troubadours. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I, this sounds like something I should be aware of. And uh, he goes, well, there's a concert tonight in Red Bluff. Sweet. Um, I go to it often <laughs> whenever they're in town. Nice. Um, and uh, you got to check these guys out. So, um, I do so know I, Doug Stein's name. I think we've corresponded over the years. You, okay, there you a go. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure because he was like a real serious like nut uh, awesome. of 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 yours. Wow. And um, so anyway, I I was like, I remember, I felt like I could I could look at the expression on my face the in, through the entire concert. Like when you first you first started singing. I remember I probably went the whole time <laughs> nice. and I looked around at everybody else. They were all like in the same. Oh, that's really cool. It that's was this, nice it was that. this feeling. And then later on, as we got further into it, like here's people and they're I getting don't dare. Look at the audience while I'm performing. I, I don't, I don't want to know what they're going through. I, I really, I'm, 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 in, I'm too insecure. You are? No. No, you're not. Give me a big thing. No, I was no, like, I that doesn't make house, sense. I, told, I tell them to turn the house lights up about halfway. Not so much that, you know, I don't want anybody sitting in the dark and well, feeling like, the, then they, they're not like, it's like separate, right? Yeah, so that's, yeah. stuff's going on on stage and then they're like watching a play or something. I want it to be interactive. Uh, so I want the house lights up a little bit and I can see everybody's expression. And that that yeah. means a lot to me when I see, see people doing that. I was going to say, because yeah, like yeah. you're like the best there is at being able to connect with your audience. Oh, well, thank you. And when you look around and that's I important. saw, I looked around at this, this packed place going, how did I not, how did I not know about this? Sweet. This is incredible. This is like, I, I felt like I... Uh, and now look at us. Look at us. And like now here we are. Friends. I know. Man, we, we're going camping okay. next week, which is, I'm really looking forward yeah, to. Are we? Like, was that you? No, I, uh, never mind. I was somebody else. But uh, I thought, you want to no. go camping? Love to. I'd love to come. <laughs> yeah, obviously you're going with somebody else already. <laughs> Hope I so like them. Just, just the more, to, oh, you'll love them. Okay, good. I can't remember who it is, but it's it'll, it'll be great. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> great. I thought that, I swear I thought that was you. Anyway, okay. so so uh, <clears throat> I uh, memorized. Probably it took me about a week, and I I just I had like a handful of your songs memorized, memorized them. Wow, you better than I can memorized do. them. And then one song in particular, I, I'm gonna be a fan for a minute, okay? Do it, man. Is that okay? I, this all right. makes me, I never really get to do that. The with mutual you, so. admiration society here. All right. Cool. Okay. All right. Cute. Cool. So. Uh, do you have any idea what my favorite song of yours might be? I think you've told me before uh, one that you liked. I don't know if it's your favorite. Okay. But you said you liked um, an, another happy song. Like it. Okay. So, and, like uh, it. Mm -hmm. and I think I did it for you one night. You, your family was at the show and I dedicated it to you and we sang it. But, um, but that's, and that, when you said that, I was like, yeah, that's one of my favorites too, you know? So yeah. You yeah. have really good taste. Yeah. Do you want to know what my favorite, no, my absolute favorite, favorite song? one? Yeah. Trailer Park in Heaven. Oh, okay. I, I can't. Right. I, I can't. Well, that makes sense. I can't your get enough. And everything. Yeah, yeah, the gospel thing yeah. and the gospel feel. Absolutely. I want to tell you the thing that you did with that song was you created this. Um, it was everything that you do, man, is is respectfully done. Mm. You're like, you, you like somehow figured out how to take jabs at people without taking jabs at people. Yeah, because it's that's like no you, fun. No, it's so good. We've it's all like, been jabbed, and it's. You, I don't, you don't, that feeling isn't good. So I don't want to, I don't want to evoke yeah. that feeling of being picked on or bullied. So how do you do it? How do you, how are you able to relate <sighs> to the characters in your songs and what you're singing about and allow everybody to be there and feel like we're all laughing 
at ourselves and having a good time without hmm. crossing the line. Is that hard? Has that been hard to like figure out how to do I mean, that? That's a really, I don't know that I've ever like thought about it and picked it apart, but that's a really very thoughtful question. It's one, I, I think I just follow this, you know, I, I, I'm hearing it for the first time too when I write it, right? So I think I'm going by my reaction. If someone were to sing that at me, at me, you know, hey, let yeah. me play, let me, let me sing my songs at you. No, uh, and so when 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 I'm hearing that line for the first time, how does that make me feel? Does it if I if I gut laugh, mm -hmm. that's a bonus. That's cool. And if I laugh, I wrote a line the other day. I've just finished a song. I'm really quite proud of, and uh, and it's a. Uh, I was inspired by the sea shanties that are being sung and popularized right now. It kind of repopularized people. Yeah. Them. Uh -huh. And a friend, an old cowboy uh, poet, uh, singer, rancher, friend of mine, was sitting around holding court with his acoustic, and uh, and and we just said, "Man, play the oldest song you know." And uh, and he says, "Oh, this is the oldest song just about anybody knows." And he played um, the Turkish Enemy. Uh, it's also been called the Spanish Enemy, and um, there's just it's, it's a boat, it's a ship song, and the ship sinks, and also this tragic tale. But it inspired me. I was like, I want to write a sea shanty. You know, I never mm. have. And I want to, but I'm going to base it in a trailer park. And so it's going to have to be more of a creek shanty, really. I, and so I wrote a creek shanty uh, where the flood, uh, the creek floods. And, uh, and there's two guys in the trailer park who the brothers, they live in this single wide and they know just what to do. They've got plans for this. They have a contingency. <laughs> And they go inside the trailer and they plug up, they take duct tape and they plug up all the pipes, vents, windows, doors, they make it airtight. Yeah. And they throw all their lawn chairs up on top of it and their propane grill and a, and a cooler full of beer and a, and a, a frozen hot dogs. Yeah. And they just go up there and then it, as the water rises, they start to flow. They, they unhook the hooks, the underpinning, you know, and, uh, and they just start floating off and they save their neighbors along the way. You know, and there's people that, and it uh, ends up there's there's one woman hanging onto a tree and they pull her up and everything and one of the guys recognizes his, it's his ex-wife and he screams and says let her go let her go <laughs> and so when i first wrote that so now to answer get back to your your question yeah. so when i wrote that i wrote that verse and i laughed for three minutes <clears throat> hmm. i just kept like playing this the verse i was like oh, okay this is all right yeah 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 this is fun this is fun and there were no barbs i didn't mm -hmm. feel um any barbs because later in the song only a few verses later do they of course pull her up and and they reconnect and they've got three or four days floating down ashtabula creek mm. together and his friends see him smiling and laughing for the first time in a, in a long time and he's talking to his ex-wife and they're kind of rekindling something mm. and so i think if anyone has a a jab feels a jab about the ex-wife line it's softened in the next just just wait sit with me for another minute because it's softened because um i had to i had to say that line let her go let her go to get you to the place where oh where you feel that you know oh this is okay they're yeah they're reconnecting this is yeah. good and so i think when i write a humor situation I don't want to write something that will jab and and then just leave you alone to deal with it. You know, I love dark songs and some of my favorite songwriters are some dark ass songwriters. I mean, you know, they drive you to the dark side of town in a taxi and you get out and they leave you alone to find your own <laughs> way out, you know? And I'm like, <clears throat> I'll never do that to you. You know, mm -hmm. as a friend, Jack, mm -hmm. I'll never drive you to the dark side of Nashville mm -hmm. in the middle of the night and drop you off and to find your own way back. Again. Again. I won't do it again. I didn't want, did, yeah. look, I know you never forget that. <laughs> you know, you, you drop a guy off one time. <laughs> you think it'll be funny. Well, you said you said you had the hotel address. So I was like, okay, yeah, it's just right I know, there. I know. And you yeah. got lost and I'm sorry. I mean, that was, I, looking back, okay, I, I'm going to lose sleep over that tonight. I am.
So you you really like um, I, however you do it, you found like the 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 like sweet spot and compromise in being able to do it. Because when you're listening, there are a lot of stereotypes about trailer park life. Yeah. And so it seems like you've been able to figure out like how to how to pick apart the stuff that 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 everybody embraces and they go, yeah, they celebrate that kind of stuff. Because when you're singing about like curlers in her hair with Mountain Dew cans or, yeah. you know, whatever, that's all stuff that everybody collectively, dude, I'm telling you, it was the greatest thing to like see this, this place where you just look around in the front and on the sides and in the back and everybody is like happy. Uh, you create yeah. this environment where so. people are happy and um, they're like going up out of their seats into the front. And I like, I've seen stuff like that in, some concerts and crazy stuff going on and oh, being yeah, raised yeah. in church. I've seen like events yeah. where you get up and, you know, yeah. I've never seen anything like this. You know, people are like dancing, you know, husbands with their wives, like they're very happy and just having an experience. So you, you create like an experience for people and, um, I've been, a, a, a really big, um, a really big, uh, fan of yours, but you know, um, I love that the, a the lot, man, cool. I love that the comedy can can intertwine with the meaningfulness of the song. Um, uh, uh, we can talk about other stuff, but yeah. I, I have to tell you one specific song I listened to one time. I'm embarrassed to say it's going to sound stupid because probably a lot of people no, will listen and won't. this won't happen to them. But I literally I got emotional from it this song. It won't sound stupid to me. It yeah. was, but it was the song choice. Yeah. When I listened to uh, Junk Drawer of my heart. Of my heart. Well, I know exactly why you felt that way. Okay. And that's, that's totally cool. I, I, right. I love that. It, but tell, I, me, tell me what happened. I started laughing. I, yeah. I, to <clears throat> listen to you say the word Sharpie ink in a song and the way you <laughs> said it, I cracked up laughing. But the more we got into the, you know, you found your way to the junk drawer of my heart, I'm like, oh, it's so, so sad. And so, it's, you know. It is a sad song because it's it deals with uh leftovers you know and yeah. we've all been leftovers in our life <laughs> we've true. all been used up and thrown away yeah you know it, either yeah. in a relationship or mm. at a job or you know um you know dark side of town taxi driver dropping you off i mean you know we've all felt that way and we all have and, a junk drawer we all have the junk drawer Absolutely. And, and when you listen to that song you think about your own junk drawer yeah probably in the kitchen yeah or nearby yeah. Yeah. And you think about all the stuff that's in there, yeah. which you, you're you into this song a little bit. You're going, yep, that's yeah. in there, that's in there. And so what what do you put in a junk drawer? It's like, it's stuff that you either, you know, you don't need it now at the moment, or you're not, not going to need it for a long time, mm -hmm. if ever. And then you forget about it. Yeah. And right. so I thought, well, there's the perfect premise for a uh, unrequited love song, you know? So yeah. like, <clears throat> and I, I took my junk drawer out yeah. And I set it right beside my desk in my studio and I put it right on the floor and I just kind of rifled through. Are some you serious? Things. I did. Yeah. Yeah. When you were writing this? Cause you know, I've got stuff in there like penny nails and, yeah, and uh, you know, gum, gum wrappers and so everything that was in my junk drawer ended up in the song. Not everything. Cause it, mm -hmm. there was a lot of stuff in there. I always wondered about the wrappers. Why do we have, why are the wrappers, uh, why the garbage put, cans right there? Well, with me, it's like, I have old receipts too and, and old coupons they, yeah. and that's in the song as well. Yeah. And so I think you just empty your pockets when you come home, you know, at the end of a day, just like, where do I put, I don't want to put this on the table where I can see it. It's like, plink. and so there's yeah. a gum wrapper in there, you yeah. know? Yeah. And so, yeah. um, yeah, most of it could be thrown away or gone through and mm. organized, but it takes time and we don't want to take the time to do it. And so this guy is, <clears throat> you know, saying that uh, he feels like he's, you know, that he's been thrown away in the junk drawer of her heart, you know? Mm. And so, um, and we felt that way, but it's a, it's a humorous look at it. And it's also, you know, you mentioned stereotypes earlier and uh, stereotypes uh, do not, storytellers i don't feel should shy away from stereotypes um stereotypes are <clears throat> stereotypes for a reason it's because they are common they are so common in fact that a lot of us most of us um uh with just one buzz phrase or word a picture enters our mind and we know exactly what that thing is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so there is gold as a storyteller you've got this a thing that is now uniting you with a bunch of people. Yeah. But the trick is not 
treating the stereotype the way everyone else is treating it, but give it another spin. Look at it from another angle. Uh, give it um, give it time. You know, of course, comedy is drama or pain with time. Yeah. You know, uh, so give it some time and some distance, and you'll be able to see it in a different way. And so when I'm when I'm writing a song about being the junk drawer of your heart, and it's a short song, four verses. It's not very long. It's in and out. I said everything I needed to say in four verses after writing eight or nine and whittling it all down, mm -hmm. um, which is typically how, how it works. Um, every author who writes a book does it the same way. It's like you usually your first uh, drafts are, are not very good and you're just whittling everything down. Um, but it's like, just take another look from another angle. And you're still held with the stereotype, but you're revealing another another side of the stereotype that not everyone kind of considers, you know? Mm. My love for you is a flat, dry tube of super glue. A dried out pen still trying to make its mark. I long for your sweet, tender lips, but it's penny nails and paper clips. You've tossed me in the junk drawer of your heart. You've tossed my love aside so easily. I guess I've outlived my utility. It's cold in here, it's dank, and it smells like Sharpie ink. And there's not a lot to do here in the dark Like all those things my heart desired The coupons here are all expired You've tossed me in the junk drawer of your heart Yeah, you've tossed me in the junk drawer of your heart So that, that's what I like to do as a songwriter. Yeah. It's like love. I've written about love a thousand times, just like everybody else mm -hmm. who picks up a guitar or mm -hmm. sits at a piano. Mm -hmm. And um, But I want, to, I want to come at it from a different angle. I want to write about love uh, using these objects that I think are commonplace, and we all have a junk drawer, mm -hmm. but, but say loneliness in a way <laughs> that um, when somebody sees a junk drawer now, they're going to think of my song. Yeah. And, that, and that's invaluable. Yeah. You know, that's yeah, that's super cool. How did you uh, when you first got into music and and, you know, you came to Nashville three weeks it, ago, three weeks ago three is weeks when ago. you started your officially. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, it's really weird because I could I saw you in concert like 10 years ago. Yeah, but I really wasn't. I didn't that call myself a musician. That wasn't then. really you either. <laughs> <laughs> no, but go ahead. When I first got into it, yeah. Yeah. Um, did you know that you would you would veer off into this particular um, form of, of music? Yes. Really? So did Absolutely. you always kind of want comedy to be inserted into your songs yes. and you thought this is what you would be singing about? Yes. Really? From the beginning. My first song that I ever wrote, I was 14. Uh -huh. uh, I was an avid fan of the Dr. Demento radio show on Sunday nights produced out of Los Angeles, California. It was just this crazy guy who had played all these crazy old songs. And then people would send them songs that they just did in their home studios on a four track tape machine. And they became famous. There's a song called Fish Heads by Barnes and Barnes. And he played it every week mm. and it became a favorite. And so I was like, wow, I'm, I want to write goofy songs based in, in a, a, the, the, culinary experience so weird foods yeah <laughs> so i had i started just writing you know inspired by dr demento um my first song was called um uh toads and it was a guy who ate who ate frogs and it was just you know lizards are cool and bugs are okay but i'll take a toad any old day mm -hmm. steak and potatoes i'll turn down if i see a frog hopping around <laughs> <laughs> How old were you? I'm not even embarrassed to say. I was, I was 14 years old. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, and um, so a lot of so, a lot of guys start. A lot of guys like me start. You know, they pick up the guitar because they see they see their friend 
under a tree yeah singing john denver and there's like three girls sitting around and they're just swooning you know it's like yeah i want that yeah i know i was a i was a weird kid i i, I saw that too i thought that, that'd be nice what was your favorite uh tv show as a kid mm. or a couple of them you know were you inspired my, by comedy sure yeah. yeah yeah absolutely um so the smothers brothers i i mean i was young this is 69, right? 60, you know, so I don't know, seven years old, eight years old. Yeah. And, and, uh, my mom wouldn't let me watch it. It was on Sunday nights. It was after like, you know, it was prime time and, and later. Uh -huh. And she would, she, it was too racy and she didn't want me. Smothers it. Brothers was Smothers too racy. Smothers Brothers was too racy. Yeah. Yeah. And there was <laughs> Laugh In and then Smothers Brothers. I think they were yeah. back to back. And I couldn't even watch laughing. It was too racy. My mom wouldn't let me. And so, you know, good Methodist kid, you know, growing up in a, you know, in a trailer park. And my mom was doing her best, you know, trying to keep me from evil out there in the yeah. world, you know. Yeah. But we had paneled, we had shiny paneled walls in our single wide. And my bedroom was just on the other side of the living room. And so I could like see the reflection of the TV in mm -hmm. the wall. Mm-hmm. If I laid my head on my, my pillow, I put certain my pillow way. kind of a certain way yeah, in my yeah. bedroom so she couldn't see me, but I could see. And right. I could, of course, hear it. Yeah. And I hear my mom in there laughing. You come know, on. like, come on, mom. Don't do this to me. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I just, I, I uh, would lay there and watch and listen to the Smothers Brothers and uh, until I fell asleep. And so I think that was my first big influence from a television perspective or whatever. But, you know, then I, as I was coming of age, I loved dr hook um yeah you know that yeah. band was great and yeah they, yeah they're yeah. all their great songs were written by shell silverstein <laughs> who was a, oh. a cartoonist and a humorist mm -hmm. and wasn't afraid to make people laugh with his music wow and so my earliest influences were like i love those guys and then as i got into rock and roll i was more interested in i loved all the serious bands and you know and everybody's just being you know writing their feelings out and performing it out in song but you know i love the eagles but joe walsh was my favorite because he released solo albums and he made me laugh he had lines in his songs yeah. that were like real mm -hmm. uh, it was pathos it mm -hmm. was the human condition but but he wasn't afraid to be humorous yeah, yeah and to yeah. be himself and mm -hmm. i love that mm -hmm. kind of stuff mm -hmm. and dr mm -hmm. hook was that way they were just they were great yeah and they were gritty and they had this patina on them from the from life and from yep. the world and the one guy had an eye patch i mean they were not pretty Insane. boys Insane. it was they were they so good great so good yeah and uh so and they were singing cover the rolling stone and uh sylvia's mother a very sad song but and also, it was chaotic it was chaotic. their songs were chaotic know, and it was right? like a, every song was like a party it was you ever heard cover the rolling stone yeah dude i mean that's a, my my son's your age, and I, I I've turned him on to Doctor Hook. It's his favorite band. Yeah, yeah, he's a musician, songwriter here in Nashville. Grant, he goes awesome. by the the name Rusty Young. Rusty uh, Young, that's his band name. Okay. And he plays in he's in East Nashville. He plays uh, around town. Okay. If you if if you guys see Rusty Young, go out and see him, and tell him Ansi sent you. That's awesome, Rusty Young. I'll call him Grant. Just so that he's like, yeah. oh, this guy must know me. Yeah, absolutely. Must, you call him Grant. Must, he, yeah. You know, his, he's Grant. But I mean, the band's yeah. name is Rusty Young. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay, yeah, got yeah. it. So yeah, he's yeah. in a band called Rusty Young. Yes. I thought he, he was like a stage name. Well, it could be. I get, yeah, that's going to confuse people. Yeah. But it's okay. Let's Confusion's start over. Fine. Let's start over. Okay. My son Grant is in a band called Rusty Young. There we go. There and he plays go. in Nashville. <laughs> if you see him out there playing, Go check them out. <laughs> They're great. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, man. Yeah, I was this. I was the same. Uh, I was always the same way. I always looked for comedy in everything. Yeah. Things that I thought were funny. I. I uh, Does even, it bug you though that like a lot of critics poo-poo these bands that? have humor in their music i mean that's that's happened yes, throughout uh -huh, very much yeah i this is what i don't I, I never understood why comedy is not allowed on mainstream radio There's i agree so personally. many incredible like literally i've I, there have been mainstream artists who have written a hilarious song yes and it never shows up on the radio. like yeah, right. i don't understand that i don't get that it's always a b-side or it's an album track 
Yeah. And uh, Willie his, Nelson has got some hilarious songs on oh, his album. Oh, yeah. Him and Toby Keith do one Toby together. Toby Keith, a, that one you know, is great. Toby's That's, hilarious Toby's in a, a lot of his stuff. hilarious individual. And it r shows up in his songs every every now and then. Yeah, so why why do you think it is that they're so... It's hard to find... Um, like, they, they say they don't know where to put you. They don't know where to... Right. What do we do with you? We oh, don't know what we're going to do with life. you. Yeah, why? Um. Well... All right, I'm, it's going to sound a little arrogant, but uh, I'm going to say it because it's hard. It's difficult. This is not easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Comedy, it, and I don't call myself a comedian because my, I have friends who are stand up comedians. I mean, that is hard work. I, I don't have the balls and I don't have the resources. I don't think I have the security to do that. So I, I can't lump myself in with that. Uh, area of the industry because that is something I'm like, you know, I'm a humorist with a guitar uh, because I will do serious songs, but I also enjoy making people laugh. Um, but the songs are real and they're, and they're as I, I came here to be a songwriter and I just realized I'm going to have to be doing these songs myself. <laughs> you know, I, I was pitching my songs and they were just pitching them right back. And so... Uh, and probably laughing at the songs. But they were. They loved the songs. You but know, it's like, yeah. yeah, but Reba's not going to do this song, you know. I'm like, well, I, you never know. I'm just throwing it out there. You know, that's what I kept saying every meeting, every meeting, every meeting. Mm. And so through the 90s, I was like, well, I'm just going to do this myself. Mm -hmm. And I did. And I was with a, a, a partner at the time, a guy that came... We moved down from Kentucky together and we started doing it, brought our families down and everything. He retired from music and I had to kind of carry on without him. And I, I took center stage and, and put a band around me and reluctantly did it, almost quit. I've almost quit a hundred times. Um, but when, like, when was the last time you almost quit? Uh, this morning, actually, okay. on my way here. I was caught I was in like, traffic. Gotta do this podcast. No, I was like, I'll yeah. quit after the podcast. I, was, I drove an hour and a half to get here. I was like, let's do the next one in North Carolina. What do you say? You want to do the? <laughs> right, let's yes. do, it's only six hours. Yeah, okay. Um, but no, no, I, I uh, no, I, I was sorry. Very I know excited. it took you a long time to get here. I was uh, very excited to to come in and do this, and and uh, left this morning with a big smile on my face. Um, um, well, of course, we all thought in a th thought of throwing in the towel in twenty twenty, um, in twenty twenty one. Uh, my wife and I, she did the booking with me, you know, and so we, we like spent, you spent six, seven months setting up your year mm -hmm. and putting pins in the map. Right. And then other pins will appear as you put the anchor dates down. And then, so we're doing California, Nevada, you know, um, up into Washington and Oregon. And we had all that squared away. And then, uh, COVID, man, it's overnight. Everything just, you know, we had to like cancel everything. Mm -hmm. And then in 2021, they were saying, okay, well, it's heating back up again. We're going to be all right. Everybody's good. All right, let's go. We did it again. Of course, then the bottom dropped out <clears throat> a second time. And so, um, and then, and then, uh, my wife, uh, was diagnosed with, with, uh, with cancer. And so pancreatic cancer. And, and then we had a, about 16 months, you know, together. And, uh, so those kinds of things definitely is like <clears throat> in the big scheme of things, making 300 people laugh in a theater, not a priority right now, right? I mean, you yeah. go through things in life where you're like, you know, um, I had to cancel all the, I had to cancel tour dates like three times hmm. in three years. Right. And, um, and the third time was sort of like, I thought might be the final blow for me. You know, I was like, I, um, you know, you're so sad. You know, she was the love of my life. We were partners in everything, you know, it was everything. And, um, you know, you find your person, you know, after all these years of trying and, um, you know, my first marriage lasted 30 years. She was a wonderful woman, a great mom. And I was just very lucky to have her in my life. And we just grew apart. And it, nobody left anybody for anyone else. It was nothing like that. It wasn't this horrible, ugly thing. It was just sort of like, I just can't do this anymore. And, you know, and, and, and so we parted ways and we got wonderful children and they're all doing great. And I'm very proud of them. And there's all this amazing stuff. And then I just so happened to meet, you know, this very special uh, person that 
timing was great for both of us. And and so what was her name? Dina Lynn. Dina Lynn. Did Dina was, Lynn Custodero. Custodero. She's a she was Italian through and through and cooked like an Italian. Did she used her loved fingers like and an hands Italian. a lot. I mean, just, she t- yeah, man. She did. She's very like, passionate about everything, and uh, funny. Uh, funny as hell. One of the funniest people I've ever known in my life uh, and made me laugh. I'm sure she added years to my life. Really? Seven years that we were together. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It was did, incredible. Did she, did she know of you or your music no. before? No. We met on Facebook. She, you know, so she met me as Nancy McLean. Uh-huh. I don't have a real name Facebook page or anything. It was like, how boring <clears throat> is that? Um, you know, hey, it's another picture of my food. <laughs> Enjoy, people. <laughs> God, this chili is great. Skyline chili, Cincinnati, two thumbs up. <laughs> anyway. I know. <laughs> anyway, well, he, don't put spaghetti yeah. in your chili, people. Stop. Stop it. Anyway. You're getting really angry. Oh, man. <laughs> spaghetti and chili, man. It's like you know, people with pineapple on pizza. Yeah. Don't put spaghetti in your chili, man. Yeah. What the hell? Eat, you eat your spaghetti. Eat your chili. Don't mix them together. That's 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 crass. Didn't we do that recently? We just tried it in Kentucky, and it was real. We all enjoyed it. Did you? Yeah. It, it does add the carbs. It gives you that. Mm, it gives you a boost. <laughs> it's so true, man. You got your protein from the beans and the and the beef, and then you've got your your carbs. Yeah. Really, in your chili? Look, I'll just pretend I'm not hearing any of this. <laughs> I'm just listen, dude. <laughs> I, now, are you saying you do like pineapple on your pizza, or you I, don't? I do. Actually. You do actually. Okay. Right. I thought you just compa- made the comparison. <laughs> I do. Have you had Jets? Have you had Jets pizza? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And have you had yeah. their Hawaiian? Yes. Say no more. Yes. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. You had me at hello. And they're, they're those chunks. It's yeah, the that chunks, are, yeah. It's the it's thick, not like it's Michigan. It's not Chicago right. style. It's Michigan's a Detroit mm-hmm, style, mm-hmm, which mm-hmm. is great. Yeah, Jets is don't good. get me started on food, man. We're yeah. gonna like totally. Yeah, you know, and I'm off carbs at or the moment. Or Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut, no. <laughs> <laughs> Domino's for I the just chain. To throw that out there for the chain. Domino's mm-hmm. for my money. Domino's is the way to go. Oh, you're kidding! I think a lot of people. Wait, yeah. wait, you would you who would agree with that? You guys would both agree that Domino's yeah. for the Domino's, chain is now, the way Domino's to go. Domino's sucked many years ago, but they they <clears throat> talked to other people. They they did focus groups, and they fixed it. This new CEO came in. Yeah, I can't think of his name right now, but like recently, like not that long uh, ago, within ten years. Okay, I would say. Yeah, I had no I had no idea. Oh, I yeah. had Domino's and I mean Domino's just whenever it was greasy. It was just you know you pick it up and it's, you know that whole thing you know. Which mm. people in New York like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And right. that's cool. You fold it and you eat it. It's great. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it always gave me indigestion. Grease is not good for you. Yeah. It's not. Was it Russell Wiener? Yes. Russell Wiener? Yeah. Russell Wiener. It's not a joke. No, it's not a joke. Wow. Russell, thank you, Russell, for all your for your for your service. For your service. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, also I would say Marco's Pizza is also a small chain here in this area. Marco's, is that good? Marcos yeah, have is you been good. there? Thin crust. Okay. Thin crust I'll have to check squares, that out too. which is how I grew up eating it in Ohio. Oh, Central really? Ohio. Yeah. It's like a, a is Little Caesars square pizzas? I think you can get it square cut. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Little Caesars, not my favorite, but you know, nah. it'll do in a pinch. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. If yeah. you got five bucks. Right. Is it five dollars anymore? No, I think little it's Caesars? a little more than that. Seven now, but yeah, but it's oh, gone okay. Up. They had to raise raise the prices. Yeah. Everything's yeah. gone up since COVID, man. Yeah, I know. What about know. tip inflation? How do you feel about that? Um, I I don't I don't uh, wait. Are you talking about the pressure? You mean like the pressure yes. of having to? Yeah. yeah, I hate. We just talked about this. Like yesterday, we went through a drive through, and going through the drive through, you get to the thing. They give you the thing, and it says you got to sign it, and you got to pick one of the options. Yeah. So you're faced with like looking at them in you're the face shamed and all that into into like other. all right. Yeah, I didn't do it. I I have no problem refusing to do it at the drive through. There's no additional service there at the drive-thru. I don't care oh, yeah. whether it's McDonald's or whether it's Edley's. Right. Uh, if it's a drive-thru, it's a drive-thru. Yeah. So I don't I don't get that. But then I thought about it. And I'm like, Edley's is even a place like that. They don't even, they rarely even take your trays away anymore. Like you even you have, have to, to do like. It yourself. Yeah. So the, the service that they provide that. is is the service of 
maybe bringing the food to the table and then you're on your own after that. Right. That's the way it is in a lot of these places now. So I feel like the but that's tip, not a tip place. No, it's not a tip place. I wouldn't, I'd say no, or no if tip. it is a tip place, I would say you can't just say 15, 18, or 22. Yeah. Like, what about five? Yeah. You know, what about 3% because all you did was bring my food and sit it here and then I never right. saw you again. Right. So I don't really understand. Yeah, I think it's, I think the whole thing is a, is a scam, but I, they know yeah. what they're doing when they give you the little pad. They do, I know. They know so, mo more people are going to choose something. Now, if it's a nice restaurant, I go 20, mm -hmm. not necessarily because I think it might have been worth it, but it's just easier math. I'll be honest. Yeah, I mean, that's that's yeah, probably the big it's, reason. It's true. It's ten yeah. times two. It's yeah. It's whatever ten percent of that, and that's easy to. I'm not a math guy. Yeah, you're not. That's what I'm saying. And it, now it's costing me money in my adulthood that I did not pay attention. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mrs. Yeah. Smith. Yeah. She's still alive. She's very old. You know she's alive. And she's mean. Ooh. Yeah, she's a lot. Yeah, my elementary school yeah. math teacher is still alive. How, how do you? So you looked this up recently? No. Yes, I did. You have to. <laughs> yeah. I felt I felt kind of embarrassed to you say ever get, that I had, but I, yeah. You ever get curious about like uh, people that you went to high school with, and you like go on and see what they're up to today? And Teachers, go, you, you do it a lot. I go, damn, they, they look great. And then I go and brush my teeth. And go! <laughs> <laughs> I I do the opposite of that. Oh, do, you look. I'm like, your man, I look good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why do these people get so old? <laughs> well, I have, you know, I did my makeup before I came. So, um, but no, no, I, I don't know. I think there's some where you got, kind of realize, wow, they've really held up pretty good. Yeah. And then others like, you look. What happened? You look You've like, lived a rough life. <laughs> you can't say that to people though. No. I want, I want to sometimes. No. You look like you've been through hell. Yeah. Danny Johnson, I will not say that to you. <laughs> Danny Johnson. That would be mean <laughs> would and be cruel. Terrible. Would never say that to you, to your face. <laughs> no, just just right here. Just here right Jack here, Vail. right now. Jack Vale brings the bully yeah. out in me. Mm -hmm. Now, there was nobody named Danny Johnson. Now, I'm always curious. I, I get curious about that stuff. I'm at the point in my life where I, I, I find that I get actually very curious about um, people from my past and weird years, too. Why do we care? What, what is that? Uh, I'm genuinely curious, I think, because I got brought to a point in my life where I, uh, I like things that bring me back in time, um, specific, specific grades too. Yeah. I, I forgot a lot about high school, but I can remember fifth grade like you would not believe. Yeah. 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 Fifth grade's uh, kind of a, that's a year though. That's a mm -hmm. year 12. That's pretty um, formative, you know? Mm-hmm. I fifth grade was when I found out about uh, the birds and the bees. Yeah, me too. Found out about sex in fifth grade. Fifth where, grade, where and how and who? <clears throat> um, Lara Collins had a pretty big crush on this guy. Oh, nice. Good. And uh, she was in for you, sixth Lara. grade, so that was okay. A year older too. Yeah. Yeah. Those and, older women, man. Yeah, and I I remember going. <clears throat> I, I remember listening to kids talk about it. They would talk right. about oh, right, things. Right. And then the high school was behind us. This was at the, I don't know if there's still, still a working school today, but it was the Nazarene School in um, Stockton, California. Yep. And behind our school was a you grew high up school. in Stockton, that's right. Yeah, I grew up in, so I was mm. born and raised in Lodi. And Stockton was, was a place, my mom was the secretary at this school for a year. Gotcha. And so other than that, I went to a, another school my entire life. And then, um, but this one year I, I took, I did fifth grade in, in Stockton at this Nazarene Christian school gotcha, place. Okay. <clears throat> and so in the back of the school was the high school. And so all of us younger kids would like sneak around and like see, um, you know, we could see when the, when the high schoolers were like making out or something, Oh right. you know, yeah. which was really unthinkable as a Christian school. You don't do that stuff. So oh, everybody does that stuff. Everybody did it. Doesn't it doesn't matter. It was against the rules, though. Yeah, it probably more so at Christian schools. Yeah, it was more against It was against the rules. Because it's, it's verboten, right? And yeah. so you're like, it's just more exciting. Yeah, yeah. It really was. Oh, and, hell yeah. And I came back from lunch. We all kind of shared uh, an entryway to this lunchroom. And every once in a while, you get a glimpse of like a couple of high schoolers kissing or something like that. And I yeah. came over one time when it happened to me, and I'm like... 
I, I don't know. I thought I was going to tell somebody something really spectacular. My friends and I said, I just saw these the high schoolers and they were kissing. No body parts it was as or if, anything. No. Just, and just couple, my friend uh, Greg, <clears throat> my friends Greg and Brandon, Greg Skinner. Oh, well, yeah. Just remembered his last yeah. name. And, Hi, Greg. And Brandon. I haven't seen Greg in a while. Uh, we're like... Okay, that was their response. Yeah. Yeah. What so. else do you think they do? <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I said something really. I, I was. I felt embarrassed that I. I wasn't more that I thought it was such a big deal. Nobody else cared. Yeah. And then the conversation progressed throughout the rest of the day, and the next thing you know, like there were friends of mine who were talking about having babies. Yeah. In fifth grade, sixth grade, and I'm like, oh my gosh, and I couldn't quite put two and two together. Still, I was still yeah. trying to figure out. Nobody was being specific. They so talked I grew about up in a trailer park, and there were fifth graders having babies. So you know, I mean, and that's when it really like hits you in the face, like, oh, yeah. there's something going on here. So you got to get two cousins together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure that happened too. Two cousins who love each who love other. each other. <laughs> They have a lot of the same things in common, <laughs> you know, like, you know, relatives. Yeah, family. That's right. Family recipes. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, uh, I rode my bike up to the uh, quarry around uh, just up from where I grew up, and we had just back roads, and I rode my bike everywhere. Mm. And it was about that age. And I rode up on this little, little uh, alcove area where there was a, a couple, uh, an older couple, adult couple yeah. had, you know, found their way there and they were, they were about to, you know, engage. And I was like, I didn't know what was going on, Yeah, but I, I rode my bike up anyways. I'm going, I was going swimming, man. And that guy was so <laughs> mad at me. I yeah. just, he was just so mad. I just saw that he was like, I don't know what's going on here, but I'm going swimming. <laughs> and so they were, we had a rope to a tree and everything. It was just beautiful. This, yeah. You know, bucolic little place and it was just you know mayberry rfd you know is where wow. i kind of grew up wow. and so uh but yeah there was this i'd never seen them before but yeah they were and so that that started me thinking you know but i would hang out in the barber shop where there was all these old oh old and listen dudes in the bar and i would just put a, yeah. a comic book up against my face oh really and, and they I, didn't know you were a kid well they knew i was a kid but they but thought they you weren't paying attention listening. you're reading a comic yeah, book and they would all just and i'd learned a lot of stuff you know just like just Reading just listening to the barbershop folks. listening to the barbershop guys wow. the old the dirty old men the dirty at old the barbershop men. just wow. these old guys are just farmers and you know yeah and uh they had the day off or whatever just sitting around it was great yeah and then um and then finally talked to my talked to my mom about it and it was like a three hour my mom was a talker so you talked to your mom your mom told you about this yeah i'll be darned so did you go to her and say hey i need to know more or did she i told you? her to just Please be quiet now. Can, I don't want to hear any more. But this. I mean, how did it start though? Like, how did you originally go to her and say, "Hey, look, I need to understand how this works"? <clears throat> well, I told a joke. Is this? I, I told a joke. <laughs> so I, I told. I you're, you're looking at part know, of my family. I, I, I have some family members over here. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I told. No, I heard you know it. what? I, listen, they are all good. I okay, think. Sweet. I think you no, are in, in the clear. This doesn't get uh, raunchy at all. It was just like no, no. no but, but it's very. It's a kid. Of res yeah, I get it. It's a kid thing. So no, this is good. I heard a, a, a joke that another kid told it in school, and everybody laughed, and I didn't get it. Okay. And it was a Gomer Pyle joke, and the punchline is surprise, surprise, surprise. It's not my finger either. Okay. <laughs> so that was the punchline. But anyway, I, t I came home and I told that joke to my mom. <laughs> and my mom gets, my mom Wait, is Wait, like, I don't, I, did I hear the joke? You, do you have to? You, the punchline alone is pretty much. <laughs> he's with his girlfriend, <laughs> Betty Lou, I guess was her name. I can't remember. But yeah. he was with his girlfriend, Betty Lou, and he's trying to like, you know, tease her into you know, having sex. And okay, he just, I, and see. He, I see. And he steps in slow, you know, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. And everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's yeah. like, can can I do this with my finger or whatever? And she goes, oh, I that's, see. that's not my belly button. And he goes, that's not my finger either. That's a joke. Okay. okay. Now, so there. <laughs> I, 
Did I have to explain? No, yeah. I didn't. I, we could cut okay, all that all right. out. No, anyway. Okay. All right. That was just that was just for Jack. That was just for Jack. All right. All right. All so right. and uh, I don't know what it was, if not his finger. I'm not saying. I I have no idea. <laughs> so anyway, but can you imagine telling that joke to your mom <laughs> at 12 years old? No. Yeah, I would never. I had no. I would I didn't never tell it. my mom that. So joke. this innocent 12 year old son comes up to his mom and says, "Hey, I heard a joke today, and I didn't understand it." Mom was like kind of reluctant. Well, okay. Well, you want to tell it to me? And she, she's kind of, I can remember her reaction. So I told her I got to the punchline and she had this dual reaction immediately. One side of herself fighting the other side of herself. She's like, oh, oh Ronnie, no, I grew up Ronnie <laughs> Joe. Ronnie, no, that, oh. Right. <laughs> no, no, you, we don't. And she's laughing and trying to yeah. reprimand me at the same yeah, time. Yeah. So I knew I was onto something. And, uh, Cause I wanted, you know, I just wanted to make people laugh, you know, it was yeah. my, my thing. And so, um, <laughs> surprise, surprise, surprise. Yeah. It's not my finger either. Yeah. No, that could be the title of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's a very old yeah. joke and uh, probably nobody's even hears it. I've never, I've never heard it. The Gomer pile reference. Yeah. I've never heard surprise, it. Surprise, surprise. But um, that's when it developed into Ronnie. We we have to we have to talk. Was that a long conversation? With My your mom? mom was very long winded, and yes, I remember really? it going on for hours. Okay, so she, well, she probably told you like a lot about specifically like how things work and why it works. And it was stuff very like clinical. It was a very clinical conversation. Yeah. See, I my <laughs> stepdad told me about it, and he was uh, so straight and to the point. Yeah as straight and to the point as you could possibly get. 12 minutes. And and part of that is maybe the difference between a, a woman or a, like mom or dad. But right. but with him, his was, I came home that day that I told you about from fifth grade. And I yeah. said, listen, everybody apparently knows this except me. And uh, Sue so yeah. goes, oh yeah, you need to know about that. Yeah, and yeah. so he literally said it so specific, it blew my mind. And it was very, like, I didn't wow, need yeah. to know anything else. I'm like, oh, someday I'm going to think that's a good idea? All right. <laughs> and that was it. Oh, I and, thought and I, right away I knew it was a good idea. You <laughs> and I spent every ounce of energy and every moment of my time. Thinking about that. Thinking about uh, planning, uh, moving toward it in every way possible. How can I experience mm -hmm. this for myself? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and it took years. Yeah, <laughs> I was forty three. Did you end up and figuring? <laughs> finally, I was like, you know, that's what this was all about. Yeah, actually, uh, and I kind of remember it being kind of anticlimactic. I'm like, God, every commercial, every song, every movie, every TV show, everything is geared around sex, mm. and this is it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, it was not, it was nice. It was very nice. Mm -hmm. It got better. I mean, but it's like, I was like, like all of this, all of this stuff mm -hmm. about this, mm -hmm. you know, relax, people. You know, mm -hmm. that was my attitude. You know, like uh -huh. it was great. And then, of course, you know, within I was wanting to just do it as soon as possible again. How, to, how did you? How did you ever decide in your career that you were going to go? You obviously went a pretty family friendly, very family friendly yeah. route. How did you decide to do that? Well, just, you know, just, I mean, cause you obviously of, have a dirty mind. So, well, I mean, of course, I mean, uh, just, I, I think I have a normal <laughs> mind. I'm not, you know, um, I don't have, I don't have a leg up on anybody, you know, it's just, I, what I do just you mean by that? like, well, leg up all my friends. I'm probably the tamest of all my friends, you know, yeah. we, we get talking about stuff and, and, um, uh, it can get it can get pretty wild, and uh, and I just end up laughing and enjoying it, you know. And <laughs> like, you, you can't be serious. Y'all did that, you know. Anyway. And, but um, but I'm I've been I'm coupled with all of that. I've mm -hmm. always been the romanticist, you know. I've always been, um, I've always just wanted to be loved and to love and to, you know, even from the time I was, you know, my first girlfriend. And, and my first girlfriends, that's what it was. It was about having someone, you know? And um, I, I think 
I'm weird as far as guys go. And, and as well, I found myself single again later in life and like um, talking to women about meeting men wherever at church at bars on, online you know on single sites or whatever and they was just telling me these horror stories just how horrible men are out there mm. and they would say dude you're no you're you're different you know this you're a, a different breed i don't know i was raised by very good strong women my dad was gone a lot abandoned me at you know at 13 and you know i didn't see him again for years and i had a stepfather who loved me very much and, and took over and was great it's a sweetheart. Uh, they're all gone, and um, they were all gone quite early. And um, so, I think I've always loved women, and felt that they were the smarter, stronger, better of us. Mm -hmm. um, and in in many ways, strove to be more mm -hmm. like women in that way. Yeah. Um, and and it's to this day. I mean, my relationships. I have a lot of women friends, and and uh, they make me laugh. Uh, I can talk about anything. Mm -hmm. we, we go all over the place, and you know, it's hard to it's hard to find that sort of a, a thing with a with a guy. My guy friends are are like me. They're very tuned in. Their antenna are way up. We're sensitive guys. We 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 love music and art. You know, I mean, it's. I found my tribe, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so I just, you know, I don't know, man. I uh yeah, I have a dirty mind. I don't know. I guess no dirtier than than anyone else. Yeah. And and I do Typical. weave it into a song, but I do it softly. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'll I'll step to the line and I back off a step. Yeah. Which I think is always funnier anyway. <clears throat> That's or more poignant anyway. Yeah. And and more more creative and smarter sometimes to to go that route. I think so. It, it's it's no, it's true. I know what you're saying. It's hard to uh, the uh, creative types want to push themselves as far as they can go and and figure out where is the line and yeah and where should I where should I back off yeah um and um I'm always kind of wanting I want to push the envelope but. Yeah. I, I look out and I see other people pushing the envelope like way too far. Yeah. And I'm like, that's not, that wouldn't be good for me. But see, and you in many ways push that envelope more than I would ever be comfortable doing. Now we tried some, you know, uh, Gorilla Street uh, filming back 10 years ago, whenever it was, when we, we tried to do some things in California. And that Gorilla style of just going out there and, and doing weird, uh, random things and getting people's reactions. I want to script it more. And I think I was trying to do that, you know, it's like, yeah. I, I, I have some ideas. Let's, let's script it and have lines or bullet points where we go from here to here to here to here. And, and your style is just to go, Hey, put a camera on me and let's, let's do this. And getting people's reactions when you're doing actually a very natural act, we all fart and uh, we all have uh, that, and sometimes embarrassingly audibly in front of people. Yeah. And, yeah. but so your thing of like getting people, you know, and I know you're, you know, it's like, that's part of what you do and everything, but it's like, I've always admired the, the tenacity that it takes to be able to work with total strangers randomly like that. I am an introvert really inside. I mean, I, uh, you know, give me the give me the cane and the top hat, and and I do my thing, and you know, and da 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 da. But you know, once it's done and the lights are down and I'm backstage, I'll, one on one, I don't small talk with people. I hate small talk. Uh, if I've just met you and we're talking too much about the weather, man, I'm I'm going to ask you some deep, like philosophical, religious, like examining the navel type <laughs> questions because I don't care about all this other stuff. Yeah, and yeah. Um, so. What is it about you? What what enables you to do that? You're you're sort of an an anomaly to me. You're like one of these kind of mysterious figures, a myth a mythological figure, if I may, that I can't imagine myself being. So what is it? How does that work for you? How do you make that work? I I think that I've always tried to. Um 
find the quickest and easiest way to make somebody laugh, whatever that was. Fart. Yeah. What's, and, what's funnier than, <clears throat> than the sound of a fart yeah. coming from somebody's body? Yeah, there's always, <laughs> it, you never know what it's going to sound like. I, I, think, <laughs> true. I think that for me. At my um, age, what it might do. You never, I don't trust farts. That's anymore. true. Yeah. 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 I, I just, um, I've always really enjoyed that, um, that moment. You know, I have, I have one magic trick I do one and, <laughs> and it's, it's a deck of cards. I can do it. Yeah. And 99 out of a hundred times, nobody knows how I did it. And, and I get that reaction. Once I get to that point, they're so certain that I have no idea what the trick is or that I did it wrong. Excuse me. And then, and then they're just complete, their mind's blown at the end of it. And they're like, that doesn't make any sense, you know? And that look on their face, <clears throat> it's real similar to um, that feeling that you get when, when you can just see that somebody is satisfied with something that you did. Yeah, right. I just right. really... It's immediate. It, it, it's oh, it's such like, yeah. yeah. It's almost like, you know, um, and, and the art in it is interesting to me. I remember uh, watching an old... Um, episode of Seinfeld and yep. there was this uh this moment where like uh, oh George uh Costanza figures out that it's better to leave the room on a high note oh I love that episode yeah, yeah. I love it so much I've used and, it many times myself that oh, line so have I yeah after I saw that I'm like and that I'm makes so much yeah. sense yeah <laughs> like when you get the laugh take off yes, you know and then you, right. they're never gonna forget it you even wanting more you could screw it up if you hang around too that's long right. And he does. <clears throat> and he does. Yep. And um, I think that it, it was it was not easy at first because I'm a little bit like you. I don't I don't necessarily I hate small talk too. Um, I found I find that <laughs> when I was a kid, I hated the fact that old people around me were always having these boring conversations. <laughs> How much can you talk about your day at work? And yeah. what the weather's going to be and all that stuff. Yeah. And now here yeah, I yeah. am. Here I am yeah. engaged in these conversations with other people just like me. And I'm like, we're talking about boring stuff. <clears throat> I try to get out of those conversations as qu quickly as I can, um, too, because I like to get to the meat of, I'm so curious about things. Do you have any icebreaker questions you know? that work every time? Usually I bring a pooter with me and I can just, and that oh, breaks the ice. That, oh, there you go. Right there. You there know? you go. Automatic. Yeah. You have an yeah. automatic icebreaker. Yeah, I, I actually enjoy asking. Um, I, I like when I know something about somebody politically, uh, religiously. Um, yeah. Those are things that people are always seem to be interested in, whether whatever they believe. So, they're sometimes always people are scared that to ask. Interesting. Yes, they're afraid to go there. But yes, um, you know, yeah. and I've I have a sign hanging up in my home. I, I my wife and I entertained a lot, and and I, I still, I'm trying to get back into that and everything, but we have a sign up there that says, discussing politics and religion does nothing but ruin a perfectly good dinner party. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that's true as a group, but when mm -hmm. I'm one-on-one -on -one with somebody and I feel like I'm, I've known them enough, of course I wanna know that stuff. And I'm, uh, you, you wanted me to do the Flipped Off song, and that's a song that, uh, you know, I was just flipped off by a silver-haired old lady with a honk if you love Jesus sticker on the bumper of your car. It's the longest <laughs> title of any song ever, I think. And, uh, but you know, it's, I introduced that song by saying, um, I don't care who you vote for or who you pray to, as long as you use your turn signal. <laughs> because that speaks to the daily, you know, BS of daily life, the, the human condition on its, nuts and bolts of every day. It's like, if you're kind enough to let me know that I don't have to sit here longer, I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you to get out of the way so I can turn right. And then you use your turn signal so I can move just a few seconds sooner than I would have. You know, that's very thoughtful and thank you very much. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a simple thing, but it could it, it can make the difference in someone's day. These little kind acts of realizing number one that you're not the only one in the universe that it's like you're right here and the universe revolves around you okay i get it now thank you for letting me know not my people and and so you 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 kind of you find your tribe that way too i think yeah and that's why you and i get along so well it's like we, we we'll we'll catch up how's the family and all that stuff and then it's like down to brass tacks man it's like mm. 
uh, we're talking about deeper stuff, uh, things that really mean something. Mm -hmm. And I don't, um, I don't shy away from it anymore. I, I'm not afraid to bear my soul to someone that I feel. Now, if you're going to interrupt me and you're talking at me and all this, I, you, you won't get, you won't get to know one thing about me. Mm -hmm. I, I'm annoyed and I'll leave and I'll go talk to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you engage, if you're real and you're mm -hmm. authentic and, <clears throat> you know, and you listen, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. it's like, I, here I am in the business of communication. I'm in the commu communicative arts, graphic arts. I was, uh, our whole job is to communicate. And um, I have found as I've worked with other people that are also in that field, just how poor their listening skills are. And it always baffles me. Is that how can you be in this line of work mm. when communication is, is what you're getting paid to do? Well, you're so crappy at it, yeah. you know? So it, it's always, always baffles me. And um, all my favorite songwriters are listeners. You have to be a listener to be a storyteller, you know? Mm. You got to listen. That's really, that's really good. Yeah. That's well, when somebody says, true. I want to be a writer. I say, read. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing you should be doing is read. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you don't just start writing. Uh, who cares? <laughs> you know, yeah. Read and then learn how to write that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to be a musician. Well, listen. Yeah, and not to mention, you know, if there is something that you really want to say to somebody, yeah. it feels like you're going you're gonna to go a lot further if you become a listener, if you listen to them, listen to people, because people really want to be heard, too. That's the other thing. Everybody sorry, has was, something important. I was distracted by this. Yeah. Thing on the uh, what I what said was, everybody wants to be heard. <laughs> no, it's exactly true. No, and they want to feel important, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. want to feel like you mean something to them. It doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to become bowling partners or see each other every week or anything like that. But that time that you have with them, yeah, like you're the only person in the on the Exa planet right now. That is so important. Jack, you are the only person on the planet right now. Thank you for saying that you because I, I was starting to. It's you and me, man. Good. Appreciate that, buddy. Absolutely. All right. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. I, I even heard that like when, you know, in, in, in raising kids, like you want your kids to feel like they're being heard. Absolutely. It's such an important part of like development and all of that stuff. That's why I agree with you. Like in, com in conversing with people, I don't understand I've been involved in these weird conversations where people just want to just, they just bat you over the head with stuff yeah. and they don't really give you a chance to kind of say, have you thought about, like you have things to say too. And I don't know why <laughs> right. so many people are bad at communicating, but. Um, Cause it's hard. It's not as easy as spouting off what you just learned. Yeah. Talking at somebody is easier than engaging in a conversation. Cause you have to, there's some investment involved there. Yeah. You have to invest time and energy. It's, it's a little more work. Yeah. You know, you have to remember stuff about people. Have you ever had a, a, um, have you ever had anybody really mad at you at a concert or like oh. somebody who was mm. offended by something that you said or did or a song, like a moment that you were just like, you had no, you didn't mean anything by it but somebody just yeah. got the bat they just and they just hated you for it no i mean hate's a really strong i mean oh, that's good let's move on no not but but they let me know <laughs> that something bothered them uh-huh yes so that has happened they usually do it very kindly and they're almost kind of afraid to bring it up kind of thing it's at the merch table and they're, you know that it's that one song you know so if i may speak to your favorite song this yes. happened in Chattanooga at a festival, and we had closed the show with Trailer Park in Heaven, which okay. is, it's my way of, so in, in the Christian uh, vernacular and in the Bible, it states that, you know, um, God has many mansions and he is preparing a home for me. You know, he's preparing a place for me. I mean, that's from scripture. And, and I, I wanted to take that and pare it down and make it a little more about my experience and what my hopes would be. I don't need a mansion. I don't need one here. I don't need one up there. I, I, I just a simple, you know, and so I hope 
I hope they have a trailer park in heaven is the, is sort of the gist of the song. And it just says, you, uh, you don't have to put me in no fancy house on high because I was born a poor boy and that won't change once I die. I'm, I'm happy with what I have. And if you can find contentment with, uh, with what you have, even if it's little, then you'll, you won't be longing so much for what you don't have, which breeds discontent, unhappiness, loneliness, sadness. Um, and the Buddhists uh, say that those attachments are what bring us uh, pain and misery in this life. Um, and if you kind of absolve yourself from all attachment, that then um, that's really the only true way. Living in the moment, removing attachments is the only way to kind of have peace and contentment and happiness in life. And so, you know, the Bible says the same thing as the Buddha says the same thing as the, you know, Talmud says the same thing. There's all these ancient religious texts all have those things in common, trying to teach us that happiness is not in the stuff that we have around us, you know, it's not in the material. And so I was just writing a song to speak to that, right? I yeah. was just... I wanted to say that in a somewhat humorous way. Mm -hmm. So after the concert, we're at the merch table when it's very loud, another band is up there playing, um, and and we're meeting people and stuff. And this man in a plaid shirt and striped pants, he was he he was. I'm just going to say that to give you a mental image. Okay. And a uh, very small framed, a uh, very timid looking uh, guy about middle age and he came up and he was waiting very patiently and he came up after everybody was gone and and he wanted me to lean in and so I did and he said uh that song that you just did the last song in your set and I go yeah trailer park in heaven and I said yes he goes if you continue to do that song in your sets you will be visited by the wrath of almighty god thus saith the lord oh and see, those don't were, tell me that. No, don't those tell me were that really exact happened. Exact words. That yes, really happened. It really happened. Oh, and so man. I lean back and I go, I'm like, he's joking, right? And but I lean back and he was very serious. And I and all I could think of saying was, uh, well, hey, have you signed up on our mailing list? <laughs> 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 and he's he just shook his head solemnly, no, <clears throat> in the negative. And I said, sorry, I bumped that microphone. I hope it's not live. No, you're fine. Oh, good. Um, <clears throat> so he, uh, <laughs> he was just very serious. And so I go, okay, so you're telling me that God is angry with me because of that song. And he said, yes. And I said, you know, that's weird because I just talked to him this morning and I think he was okay with me. <laughs> And I hadn't, but I said that just to kind of, you know, dispel this guy. Like, so you lied. So that's another reason I God's probably very He's unhappy with very you. very angry. Oh, I lie a lot, Jack. <laughs> no, so I just was trying to dispel the situation with humor, and he was having none of it, mm. obviously taking himself and the whole God thing very seriously. And I, if God does exist, he has to have a sense of humor. He's created a lot of really funny, goofy people. He created the fart sound. And he created the fart sound, Yeah, which is great. Yeah. So, yeah, it's happened a few times, but, you know, luckily. And I did. I had my family there at that show, and I, I did alert security because I, I was oh. creeped out by this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, you don't know, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. What if this guy thinks he's the Almighty God? Exactly right. His wrath and he is did match pour out. His, He did mix his plaid, his plaids and stripes. That's kind of a dead giveaway to me that this guy's off. <laughs> so, That's so simple. I'm just saying it's just really you know yeah we have our yeah. things right yeah right. But you know so when you and I hung together uh, we last did stuff creatively and we were doing it and and I had my guitar and we were doing a man in the street thing the girl thing mm -hmm. and you you started to sing and I never heard you sing before you sing really well oh you have a thank great you. voice you could be a thank song you. and dance man well well th who, <laughs> who farts thank you very much I appreciate you could that. be a song yes. and dance man who farts <laughs> there's oh, your thing dude sounds... you could do da 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 Da, 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 choreographed music and it was, it, uh, people 
I'd pay good money to see that. It's been so it's been hard for for certain record labels to take you seriously, and you think that's a good idea for me? <laughs> Let's add farts into the mix. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. No, I think it'll work, man. Yeah. Let's go on the road. Together. That was fun, though. I had a good time, you know, doing that um, yeah. little thing with you that we did. It would be fun to, like you said, script it out. Do yeah. something down on you know Broadway. We're, we're working on something. We'll do that. Yeah, we'll mm -hmm. do that. Little, yeah, little thing I know we there. talked about it last time. Yeah, we, it's going, we'll be in downtown Nashville or Franklin or yeah. something doing. I think it's it's harder it's harder for me when I go out and because, um, I'm seen as a as a, you as an entertainer who and singer and songwriter and you perform in front of people and people listen to you on you know um, you've kind of combined uh, the genius of uh, of of comedic and you know comedy and and everything but then you listen to a song like um trailer park in heaven or uh koa refugee um <clears throat> full moon nights in pine view heights is actually one of my favorite and the oh, reason that's, that's one too. of my favorites is because it's uh catchy you know you write songs that are you sing songs that are catchy and they go through your head all day uh Melodious. christmas at the trailer park uh <laughs> dude melody is, is important man. it is so important yeah. it is so important so it's so for the song you got to pay attention to it yeah exactly and and i think you know with um with me i've encountered a handful of people that are that are like really mad at me you know really yeah. angry with me um not not a lot you've been hit in the face yeah not a lot it's it doesn't <laughs> happen often it's not something yeah, right, that like right. i'm faced with all the time um but it did just happen a couple days ago. Really? Uh, yeah. It you got was, hit in the it, face? I didn't get, I, it was, I wasn't attacked. You punched? But I think if the cameras weren't on, it, something might have happened. And I didn't do anything to Could this person, escalated. and that's the thing. Uh, um, what happened was uh, I actually uh, walked by a couple, uh, squeezed it in my pocket yeah. as I went by. Um, you see this person, the wife looks back and next thing you know, this is right after we walked in and started shooting. And the next thing you know, we were, uh, they went and found us before I could even prank anybody the else. Do anything. Yeah. The couple oh, went okay. back and found us. And yeah. Okay. He, um, had a real big problem with me and Her just started did. to kind of harass me and started to say in front of his wife and everything, like she became part of it actually. Yeah. And he said, uh, how do you? It, man how do you do it and i'm like something seemed a little off to me usually somebody will say they might want a picture or something like that and you're like yeah hey how you doing but something seemed off about this guy they were also youtube stars and they were filming something adjacent to what you were doing how do you do and it, it man? Like, yeah, yeah. All these <laughs> <laughs> yeah right everybody's youtubing now <laughs> yeah. yeah and uh you know but it was like it was very strange um and it escalated very quickly. You can feel it right away, right? When something's off, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, there's yeah. something. Yeah, why do you do it, man? As soon as he said, "Get that. a life," I thought, oh boy, here yeah, we go, you, go. you know. Yeah. And and this whole thing happened. Um, and I remember after that ordeal, um, it escalated a little bit, and I remember thinking, and and I think yeah. I, I think what it was was I, I, you know, like I've worked really hard to try and um not be too over the top and try to insert comedy into everything that I'm doing so that it's never overly obnoxious. Like when I first started doing this, um, I remember uh, everybody thought it was hilarious. I remember watching the comments pour in and be like, oh, yeah. this is great. This is going to have some longevity. Yeah. Something definitely happened over the last six or seven years yeah. where – the the society shifted there was hypersensitivity a, yeah very much so 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 i would yeah. do so like in one video for example i will make the sound do a gag or whatever yeah. and people will crack up laughing everybody that watches that video is all about it dude you're so funny you're great thanks for doing this you're making me laugh yeah. um but if if some if i do the exact same thing in a video and the person reacts by punching me in the face, okay? Then 90% now of the comments are, oh, you're a jerk. You deserved what you got. And mm. it's been interesting watching the shift of the culture and, and how things are today. Um, 
So you have to be more careful yeah. today in, in, you know, figuring Probably that best, out. Yeah. Um, so, and it's a bummer because I, you know, growing up, like I watched, I loved stuff. I, I used to watch, <clears throat> I think we talked about this. I used to watch Leslie Nielsen take his little fart oh, thing yeah, yeah. I just into watched places. It the other day. It came up on my, yeah. So funny. It's funny, man. All that, all that stuff. It's deadpan. Oh yeah, it's that's great. It yeah, got to keep a straight face. I mean, if you were to do it, and go. Ah, I got you. you know, I got funny. you. Yeah, not exactly. Funny. Right. Right. He was seriously. He said, "Yes, yeah, the salmon." Right. It was, I said, "The salmon for lunch." Sorry. Oh, so I'm so so he great. Was so apologetic. And <laughs> well, let's just keep rolling. Let's keep rolling. He'd ask another question. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't know, man. Yeah. I. I think. I think that's going to be part and parcel with what you do. I think that's going to happen. It's risky. And it's, go it's going to be riskier as you, you know, I think the one I remember seeing was uh, two folks in a wheelchair and I think she got probably up a little too, in their space a little too much or something. And, and then, you know, he's right there. And I think you, you pooed it on his wife and, and he took offense. He was pissed off. And so as a husband, as a, as a protector, it wasn't, it wasn't on her as well, was, you, but you were it right was there. near, you were right. It there. was in the same aisle. I think you were touching her shoulder. I think your buttocks were like resting on her shoulder. She didn't feel it. As though. I recall, I mean, I'm remembering it. It, it that wasn't, way. there wasn't like a vibration or anything really? like oh, that. on. Yeah. No, but it's, <laughs> I just remember feeling like, you know, well, yeah, you know, Hey, there's this this dude's you know kind of standing up for his wife you know so, yeah somebody yeah. who's thoughtlessly has flatulence and is doing it a little a little too close yeah you know well, so you get you understand that too as a human you're like you know you get you get the whole as a as a comedy lover myself you know you get that aspect of it but yeah. I think there's times when when if elements are just lined up just so mm -hmm. you know yeah but, you know. Yeah, it, it, uh, yeah, it's I think happen. that's yeah, I think that's I think that's true. There's comedians I, I, that won't do colleges anymore. I know they just won't do. You know, Bill Maher was talking about it the other day. Um, you know, yep. I, I just I won't, yep. I won't do colleges. Yeah, and that was his that was his bread and butter. I know, right? In the seventies and eighties, you know, yeah. I think he was an eighties comic, eighties and nineties, mm -hmm. and then, um, you know, so it's like things change. Yeah, things change. Things the climate change, changes. and 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 you have to uh, like kind of all, always be aware of, of um, you know, you got to be aware of space, and uh, and we talked yeah. about pushing the envelope, you know, yeah. earlier. That that's not always an easy thing to do. Sometimes you, you 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 cross yeah. you cross a certain line or somebody's boundaries, and that's hard too. Um, but speaking from, you know, like. In, in starting this 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 weird career that I've had, it's been interesting watching simultaneously two completely different reactions. Uh, yeah. And you go yeah. 90 percent of the time, you know what you're gonna get. Yeah. But you have to be aware that it's gonna be that other percentage, it's gonna be a little risky. And then what happens is when you do cross, that's the thing, when you do cross the line, you wanna be able to have the ability to say it was I was just kidding. This was a joke. This is yeah, not real. But it doesn't fly. You can't always talk yeah. people down from the ledge. Although I've gotten pretty good at it. Have you? Talking people down from the ledge. Have you? Yeah. What always works? <clears throat> um, usually if I just walk right up to them and just give them a kiss. <laughs> in the ear? It's like in their <laughs> ear, I think, is probably. That's <laughs> it's off-putting. You, you, get, you sneak also... up behind them and you go, hey, buddy. <laughs> that always works. And then like, Always oh, ooh, what was gonna, that? Oh. They're just gonna like, <laughs> oh, you're the guy that. <laughs> well, Listen, speaking, everything's fine. Speaking of offending people, do you mind if I uh, offend the entire city of Brentwood right now? No, I just wrote a poem. Oh, uh, it's oh, coming I, up on the holidays. Yeah, I can't wait this to is, hear uh, this. This is exclusive. This is okay. right here. Okay. On the on the Jackville podcast, I want to just go nice. ahead and so um, this is called Christmas time in Brentwood. Brentwood, Tennessee, everybody. Brentwood, Tennessee. All right. But there's every every place has a Brentwood and it's usually the upper scale place. It's always the, you know, oh, yeah. you don't call a trailer park Brentwood. No, you know, it's, it's always no. going to be, you know, no, but anyway, so this is Brentwood. Uh, yes. Yeah, just okay. a little enclave in middle Tennessee. That's uh, very well to do. And, and uh, I've got friends there and yeah. Hello. It's Christmas time in Brentwood. We've been to five wine bars 
And now we're off to Maryland farms where the streets are jammed with cars. We snub our nose at Cool Springs because Smyrna shops down there. It's Christmas time in Brentwood and love is in the air. We're weaving round the homeless, waving at the traffic lights. We never make eye contact, but we keep them in our sights. Oh, oh, oh no. We're honking at the slow pokes, kissing their tailgates, throwing shade at the pickup trucks with Murray County plates. <laughs> My mega church on Franklin Road, every Christmas bulb in place. We're so proud to worship there because you can see their lights from space. <laughs> we volunteer on Christmas Eve, pass out food. It's fun. It's Christmas time in Brentwood. Chick-fil-A for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been here long enough where you appreciate all the references. So when did you write that? I'm... When did you write? Nancy, <laughs> <laughs> well, the real Slim Nancy, please stand up. Please stand up. <laughs> when did you write that? <laughs> just uh, just uh, yesterday. Dude, oh my gosh. Is that just going to be a poem? you going to turn it into a song or anything like that? I got chords written down there as an idea, oh. but it's just, I, I haven't worked it out into a song. Oh, that's so I don't fun. know that that's it's great. worthy of setting it to music. It's just something I wanted to share with you because you know you're now a middle here. tennessee guy yeah you know yeah yeah okay oh please that'll be great Some little yeah like that'll be a nice touch that'd be awesome yeah. that'll be a great touch chick-fil-a for everyone yeah that's my as little tiny tim would say in an updated version of you know of uh of the christmas you know the christmas carol and he just says chick-fil-a for everyone <laughs> I, can, I can hear him say that, you know. It's, yeah, we'll just do a Instead updated. Of God bless us, everyone. Yeah, <laughs> Chick Fil A for everyone. <laughs> I, definitely, I think that needs to be a thing. Absolutely, yeah. I personally really, really like Chick Fil A. Yeah, their hot chicken sandwich. I know, I get it sometimes. Oh, it's just, I, hot ugh. chicken sandwich deluxe. Trying not to. I know. Show well, what my do you ankles? think the reason is that they don't have the the, the hot and spicy strips or nuggets? You, you know, they're I've capable of that. it. Huh? I've wondered that myself. Yeah. That's I, a very have good you question. have you guys heard anything about that? No, they're looking outside. I I don't know. We'll have to take it take it up with uh, Chick Fil A, man. We're gonna have to find out. It doesn't make any sense. They're gotta You're be waiting for the dude. right. You're now in Middle Tennessee. You need to ask them. Okay. Dan Cathy is the guy's name. Dan Cathy is the CEO. Okay. The, co the founder. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna look into it. My bladder is at uh, three quarter tank. <laughs> mine's, so, yeah. mine's probably <laughs> even higher. Yeah. Dude, thank you so much. I I, I do feel kind of like every time you and I um, get together and talk about anything, I kind of wish like it would keep going. Yeah, me and, too. And I and I want I want you to know I really I I sometimes meet with people and talk to people who. Um, have a specific amount of time. I love that I never feel hurried by you. Well, we get to finish, we get to talk, you know, well, I canceled as much as all we those want. doctor's appointments. That's so what I it was. Day, yeah. I just thanks for doing that too, yeah, buddy. You got it, man. All right. Hope like you I said, this is probably our last time talking. Yeah. Um, I need meds refilled and at least you're going out with a bang, man. I know, right? Yeah. I you know, it'll yeah. say in my obit, you know, his last public appearance was on the Jack Vale podcast. <laughs> all right awesome how you doing man cool man all right yeah. well thanks for thanks for coming and uh i can't wait to hear you sing in a minute i'm your biggest fan oh i'm your biggest fan mutual admiration society here jack vale everybody yep. jack vale gotta have you gotta have you back <laughs> i was just flipped off by a silver-haired old lady with a honk if you love Jesus sticker on the bumper of her car. Well, I was feeling pretty Christian. I was loving all my neighbors. I saw that bumper sticker there. I didn't think twice. My hand went for the horn and I pushed it with conviction. When I saw that lady's finger Just about put my heart on ice Cause I was just flipped off By a silver-haired old lady With a honk if you love Jesus Sticker on the bumper of her car It makes me want to cry 
Cause I may never have the gumption now To read those one-line sermons In bright yellow, black and white I've been buoyed up so many times While stopped in rush hour traffic And excuse me, Lord, for saying But my faith is weak tonight Cause I was just flipped off By a silver-haired old lady With a honk if you love Jesus Stick her on the bumper of her car well, you say maybe it was a rental, or she could be the second owner, or she could be a godless sinner in a loner from a friend. While that helps, I do feel better. I just can't help but see it as a sign that we're all doomed and we're that much closer to the end. Cause I was just flipped off by a silver haired old lady with a honk of you love Jesus stick her on the bumper of her car. Everybody! I was just flipped off by a silver-haired old lady with a honk if you love Jesus stick her on the bumper of her car. Amen. True story, or at least it could be. Kiss my cat.